The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, folks. It's Thursday, September the 23rd. This is an early edition, 8.06 in the morning, Eastern Time. It'll be recorded and played again at 10. I unfortunately have an appointment I couldn't change. So here I am in the early edition. I just managed to get my charts out. And for subscribers, I sent the charts out, but my template was for Wednesday. I just, I was so busy, I forgot to copy and paste it for Thursday and Friday. Everything's exactly right, except that uh, the left side chart with the Dow um, should be updated and it's not. All right, here we go. So the Dow uh, closed yesterday at 34,258. It did not take out Monday's opening uh, uh, bar high. It was also the open and high of the day. And that was at 34,313. Uh, yesterday's high was 34,440. Wait, something's wrong. 34,459, sorry. Uh, 34. 34,440. So this is going to be really important. I'm going to explain a whole bunch of things um, as we as we move on. And a question someone said, Son, I believe that you have audio. Everything should be good. Um, just let me know if there's no audio. Okay, here we go. So the Dow futures, and this is really important to me, the futures this morning had a nice green candle, still a green candle, hit the 14 period exponential moving average at 34,466. That's way above that Monday high. That is really important. And uh, even, even more significant is looking at the rally that occurred. I'm going to show you something in a moment. Look at this. I showed it to subscribers, sent it out this morning. Oh, the wrong one. Gosh, where did I put that chart? All right, I'll find it in a second. Give me one moment here. Oh, I know where it is. There it is. So look at this chart. So the big question is, the, the low that we made, I don't know why I'm having a little problem here. I don't want to mess around. There's a limited time. I've got to get this out. Here it goes. Is this the one? Let me just check. Yep. No, this is not. I'll find it in a moment. In fact, I'll use this particular chart right here that I showed subscribers. So this is this is my opening calls that I sent out this morning. Look at the coincidence in the green lines with the lows that were made with the on-balance volume. And look, each one produced a pretty decent rally. One was sideways. That was the one from, um, what was it, the beginning, uh, end of April, beginning of May. Um, but others have been perfect. Just rallies took off immediately. So that says to me, um, all right, be a little careful here because we are short. And now we have to monitor this very carefully. What is different? What is different is that the, the time that the Dow has been declining and the rotational aspect of all the different um, the different sequential highs that have been made and if you look at the volatility index and made a peak d in the day it's very unusual and look each one of these tops occurred right exactly as you got a very sharp rally in the in the dow so with that said the caveat saying hey, we might be making something very similar, even though there are there are a lot of aspects to this market that say because of the rotational uh, perspective that I have, a coincident low at this particular point with so many stocks like an Amazon, a very important stock like an Amazon, really, oh, did I just change that? No, oh, man. I, I hate when that happens. And Amazon, here we go. Um, click over here and press Amazon. Come on. There it is. Making a low, but this, none of this seems to be the low. The Amazon still seems to want to continue consolidating. And if you look at the QQQ, where Amazon, of course, is an important part of it, 
there was a rally into the into the gap yesterday. The MACD is still very weak. The uh, nine period is still below the 14 period moving average, and that's that shows weakness. The, there was a very nice V-shaped turn up in the on balance volume. The stochastic is at 25 percent. I prefer if it's at, at about uh, a sing, a low teens or single digits for a big turn, a really serious turnaround. So I'm suspecting that the pattern that I've drawn in, and in most cases I draw this arch formation saying in the Chapman Wave methodology, often coming off some kind of a low, there's an arch formation and a retest, and that's going to be the big thing. I think we're still there. There are a lot of news events that are going to be coming out today at 8.30. Oh, where did I put that? I think I might find it. There are just a slew of economic uh, uh, reports that are coming out. Let me see if I can find that. I, I had it all written up. Let me see if I can get it before. Um, there it is. Okay. So No, it's not that. All right. Sorry, I haven't got that either. <laughs> it was 8 o'clock time to get my newsletter out and everything. <laughs> that, that took a little bit of work to do. Um, so, yeah, I haven't found it. But there are just a slew of... Um, economic reports coming out if they so i'm going to talk about using the dow for the moment let me go back to the dow the big thing is going to be if there is a failure pattern today that's one thing in other words the market the dow closed at 34,258 if not the futures i'm talking about the actual cash if for some reason we close closer to the 34,258 close of yesterday that essentially changes the pattern a little bit why because if you look on every one of those major turns they gave you a pretty decent rally look at the one from the 20 round about what was it the 18th of, of june look at the way the on balance volume turned up look at the way the stochastic instead of being flat is, is which is what we're looking at now reverse sharply higher from under uh, 20% to over 20%. Look how the MAGD histogram was turning up. Look how the how quickly the a nine period moving average within within two three bars of the low. You already seen a nice move up uh, as the nine was starting to improve. You saw that again on the 19th of July at 33.98 after that peak E top in the in the, the Dow at 35,090. That was a high level, and, and, and a rule of thumb is that when there is a rally that starts with a stochastic and about the 50% level, be careful because the next turn down, even if it's at a peak D or E in the chap wave, fourth and fifth highest peaks, so we've got to be real careful. It can be quite severe, and obviously this one was severe. It took out the 30,981 low of July. We went down to 33,613. So look, yeah, the, the stochastic's flat. And that says to me that the pattern that I've drawn in, I have to consider at this particular time is correct that we could rally and then start to fail and arch over. That's my, my impression now of what we're looking at. And then that 33,613 level going into the end of September, beginning of October becomes really important because if we take that out, that is a failure of some consequence. So we've got our first break coming up. I haven't really covered many of the others, but really the Dow is a very good bench, benchmark. We'll use that for the moment. I'll be back in a moment. Basil Chapman, early edition. Dow Future. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. 
This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks. Basil Chaffin here. Early edition. This is 8, 18 a.m. in the morning, Eastern Time, and it'll be replayed at 10 o'clock. That'll be 10, 18 at this particular time. We'll see what the Dow is doing at that particular moment. Let's look at the NQ, which is the uh, uh, E-mini NASDAQ 100 continuous contract. I'm looking at it at 15,248. The high uh, so far this morning has been 15,300. 15,3100. Now, what's really important about this, you've got the Chap Wave inside track right here. This is the Chap Wave uh, falling axe formation. There's a lower highs and lower lows, makes an expanding cone formation. If at any point in the next three sessions, that's going all the way to this very Monday, if there's a touch of 15,400, it breaks the resistance line, and that's really positive. And so far, we've seen select. NDX, uh, NDX 100 stocks running sharply enough to really help. And it has, uh, in fact, with the uh, 9 and 14 period moving average in the daily, that's the pink and black line, it touched it today just like the Dow. Look at this. The Dow futures touched exactly, uh, well, within a fraction of the 34,470 uh, high of the 14-period uh, exponential moving average. Today's high so far is 34,452. Look at the S&P. Let's go to the continuous contract just for the moment. That also touched that. That's how important these moving averages are. You don't need them until you need them. And it's pink. It's in a sell mode. So a decisive break in this particular instance. Let's draw this. I, I don't know if I've got the time. Maybe I'll do that tomorrow. Remember I had that alternate count? I said this. In the Chapway methodology, there's an alternate count that I can use. And if I use that particular count, there was, there's never, hardly ever in history have I got peak C in the daily chart and an all time high with a failure pattern. It happens, but so rare. It's unbelievable how rare it is. There's no other way I could count it, but here there is. 
and that makes it a peak F alternate count at that height that was made in the E-mini futures of the continuous contract at 45, 40.25. Now, let me do this. I wonder if I can get that chart now. Is this the chart? I hope it's the chart. Let me just expand this. Yeah. Okay, here it comes. Yes, this is the chart. Okay, so we're looking at the E-mini. Look at this V-shaped bottom in the on-balance volume. Look at that. Look at this one right here. Look at this one right here. Whoops, I just missed. Look at this one, which was the lowest low. That was the lowest low, I believe. This one failed. Uh, well, it did. It worked because it, it did rally, but it failed in the sense that it wasn't the exact ictus, the low, right there. Look at these. So I can't. I never thought of this until two. What is today? Thursday. Until Tuesday night, going into Wednesday, and I had a Chapman wave, um, very low trend gauge reading, which would have suggested that there should be a weak Dow at some time early in the morning and then a rally because there was no such thing even though the down closed way off the, off the high yesterday it was a fabulous session it was a very good session and today and yesterday I had the same reading so even today there should be a week down so there's very seldom does this particular index fail uh, but it is, that would be two in a row that's really a, that says that something else is going on and therefore I have to respect it so my suggestion here is that this inverted v-shape in the on balance volume is telling me that there's still enough residual strength not just weakness but it's now strength i've got to respect that and as as a result let's see how the day plays out because there must be i i didn't have a chance uh oh wait a minute is that it no it's not <laughs> what, a, what, an, what an old reminder there let me just see what that is I wish I could get the, all the different. No, it's not that. Gosh, that is disappointing. I had it and I said, print it out so that you can see it tomorrow. It's going to be such an important day. It just goes on and on. I mean, jobs reports, all sorts of things. So uh, we'll see at 8.30 it starts off and how the market reacts in seven minutes time is going to be important. But look, the E-mini, the MACD, this huge turnaround. It'll be extremely positive if sometime next week the nine period, green nine period moving average of the MACD crosses over the red slow moving average. But at this particular point, that is a big, that's a very wide discrepancy in the negative part of the MACD, the moving average convergence divergence. The slow stochastics at 26%. It didn't get under 20% in the E mini futures. It, I believe it did in the SP, SPX.X. There we go. In the cash, uh, it did for a moment, but now it's at 21%. So, yes, it could rally, but it's flat. And usually with these, look at this, look at that sharp turn up. So I have to still consider that the work that I've done is suggesting that, yes, there could be more of a balance, but I'm still going with the aspect that, hmm, from my perspective, I think there's going to be a rally and then a rally failure, and then we start to see testing. Now, intraday you're going to have clues because if this afternoon after maybe 130 or so if the dow is holding a plus 90 to 120 holding it and the s p and the and the um qqqs are actually in, in comparable even stronger position i can't deny that that would be really good action and that there's a chance that there could be a, a much sharper and longer Rebound. It might not be a rebound. This could be one of those lows. Look, the volatility index. I'm just. I'm arguing this out loud, for a very good reason, because there be. It's. I've always said over the many years that I've been here at TFNN decades. Um, I've always said that for the the only tradable or index or um, particular index that we've ever used that doesn't c confirm and doesn't actually correspond to the Chapman wave methodology of looking for a buy signal to go to a buy mode is the volatility index. Why? Because it, it, it's based on fear and you never know when fear is going to be and then it happens, it occurs and then there's a washout because oh everything's okay, we, we're going to survive another day 
uh, and that's that's kind of what we're looking at here because look interest rates all of a sudden the market is saying hey who cares about interest rates what were they worried about if they don't care now so all i can say is interest rates we'll get to that in a moment um was a factor that was a worry you had a lot of um other aspects you had china you had um uh, ever oh, you just said you could go on and on, and on. But look, the S P D at 25.09 was raised the Delta virus back in the July 19th market turnaround and VIX peak D turnaround. There was a sudden spike. Remember on the 19th of August, a month later, where you got um, the same, it was the same thing. And then you went to peak A minus and because it fell down so sharply, then you got a peak A, B, C and you finally got your D. Look at this. You got a D at that top. I always should put the down arrow at the D top. Aha. Uh -huh. When we get back, we'll get our first first report economic report of the day. 28.93 was the high back in May, and that was another market turn, turn around. And after this big piece, it takes a while to get back there. I have to respect that. I'll be back tomorrow with Basil Chapman. Go the additional six from the Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. We're back and we're waiting to hear 8.30 is, I believe it's the jobs reports. I'm not sure. Here's your one minute chart, peak D uh, in the E-mini. Just put it in there and I don't see any reaction. And sure, I'm sure. Let's see. Uh, yes. Uh, and, and, and the Dan S&P was always mentioning U Unity uh, software and the company had on, on Kramer's show had a huge boost. I mean, they, 
there's just nothing that this company can do, evidently. And it was on my list as well, but I just, we didn't get in. Uh, Unity, let me show you, here it is. Trading uh, pre-market at 138.51, up five. It made an all-time high at 139.22, uh, back on the, with a 134 round number open on the 10th of, uh, that was 10th of September. Pulls back to the 124, 125 area. And now it's at 138.51 pre-market. So, uh, yeah, this company really looks uh, Unity Software and game-creating software. But it isn't just games. They seem to be able to put their, their, their uh, modus operandi, their platform, anywhere. So 174.94 was the open uh, uh, on the 25th of December. The open was 150 round number high. It went to 174.94 the week of December the 25th. 2020 slumped down to 76 round number low on the 12th of uh, the week of the 12th of May and then ran up to a peak D. So let's see what the futures are doing here. Yep, uh, still holding very well up 27. So this is going to be really important because I was discussing <clears throat> for those of you who just joined, I'm doing an early show to be recorded and played again at 10 uh, 30 a.m. So pre market, the SP futures are up 227, the e mini. Futures S and P are up 26.50. The QQQ. Let me just go there for a second because we did that just a moment ago. Let me go to the NQ, and this is going to be very important because today is an important session of a potential low. And I just say potential low. I, I explained. I went through it very carefully why I'd seen the unbalanced volume and the VIX index make lows. Coinc so, sorry, make highs coincidence to market lows many times before. And I don't want to get in the way of a move that's going to go up sharper than I think before. Um, uh, we still have long positions and they don't want actually made an all time high yesterday. Um, so we have long positions and we are adding today. Um, if everything works out well, we will add today to uh, not add. We will start a new position alongside in a sector we haven't been in for ages. Therefore, it's a sector that has the potential to rally. It's trying to map out some kind of a low right here that is maybe tradable, but we won't know unless it moves, I had said, about 60 cents or so from where we'd like to enter. And then we'd have some idea of what's moving higher. But when I went through a number of stocks last night, yesterday afternoon, last night, I must say that there are enough stocks to carry the market further on this initial thrust of the low. So let's let's do this. Let's go on with all the others. Look at the IWM. This is the Russell 2000. Had a, a pretty good session yesterday. Now it's up to pre market at 223. Look at, let's look at the RTY. This is the RTY. This is above recent highs. This is a good sign. 2236.40 uh, up 21.50. Gray leg A because the stochastic is still, it has crossed positive. MACD hasn't crossed positive yet. On balance volume has uh, is up. Uh, rallying nicely, but the nine hasn't crossed above the 14. This is really an important period because even though it's stuck in a range, the the in relation to what happened in some of the other indices, the small caps, the Russell 2000, actually held pretty well. So I'm trying to be as objective as I can. All right, let's go to the TLT. This is the uh, whoa, ho, 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 ho. Elizabeth, Elizabeth, look. Uh, a really strong leg D. It is, it is down today, but yesterday's candle had a really strong leg D underneath the previous high in the weekly chart of 150. Was that the one that went to 152 point something? Yeah, 152.71 in the week of the 23rd of July. Just about to retest it, and today it's down 49 cents at 151.30. So they're basically we're looking at bonds. So let's just look at that. There you go. There are the bonds. Very, very good move yesterday, giving some of it back today. It's only up 230 seconds at 163 and 2630 seconds. So now I need to look at the other areas. I want to see what gold is doing. Now I give it a little time. I'm usually a little bit behind in gold. It's down eight at 1770. If someone could correct me uh, and give me the most up to date. Uh, this is really important. I think I'm 10 or 12 minutes behind here in this particular uh, in the contract. So it's down eight to 1770. I'd say it's stuck in a range. 
It's tradable, but more intraday than anything else. I don't see it doing much at this particular point. Let's look at silver, and we spoke about silver yesterday. Silver is just down to, uh, 20 cents at 22.70. Uh, Let's look at SLV, because we had a call yesterday, and we were looking at that. Yes, it had a nice move intraday this morning in the SLV. Oh, was that yesterday? That was yesterday. And it's 2104. I said you want to see it close into close, not just get into the 2135 or higher area. It's now at 21.04. Uh, watch this SLV because that's also going to be part of a clue. Do you see the relationship between um, the relationship between gold and silver and how silver is acting or reacting? Let's look at the dollar here again. It could be a little bit behind. The dollar is acting a little weaker. It's down 27 ticks at 93.19. This is a leg D. So any pullback here suggests that it could be a peak D. And at a peak D, we're always a little careful that fourth highest peak is where you lift your foot off the accelerator. We're actually long. You lift your foot off the accelerator, hover over the brake to see what happens next. Look at the pullback in the weekly that went to a peak D. Fell sharply from the 93s down to the 92s, actually just just under 92. Now we're at 93.18 EUR USD. Uh, a little bit of a bounce here, 1.172, up just a fraction. Uh, it's actually a very weak-looking chart, so I'm not sure how long that's going to hold. Let's look at the USD JPY. This is the yen currency pair. Uh, that's that's running nicely. So often it moves in the same direction as the dollar, not not in the same proportions, just the direction. That's all. So this is stuck in a range. It's stuck between at 109.98 right now, up 17 ticks. It's stuck between the 110, 20 area and the 109. Let's call it 109. Uh, 10 area. So it's just stuck there in the weekly chart there as well. So I want to see what crude oil is doing. Crude oil is. Down 33 uh, at 71.91. It made a peak D. It's, it's gone above the Chevrolet falling axe formation. Should try to test the left side high. So this is a very important 72.90 in the continuous contract. You can see the Chevrolet inside track and falling axe formation. Let's make this green right here. This is a technique that I use. Just joining highs. Okay. And then putting in a little tiny parallel track. Uh, parallel. There it is. Parallel, and there it is. So, okay, now we, what we're looking at is we got Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. That's where crude oil is. If crude oil is able to trade at 72.85 to 73.10, close in that area in the next uh, week, that's going to be a big positive. If it slides, it's got a lot of support in the 70.50 to 70.20 area. Basil Chapman, early edition. I'll be back speaking of crude oil. Look at Fang as we go to the break. Bang is trading. Oh, this is a very nice group. Um, yeah, I'll talk about it in a moment because it's important to say that it's broken out. I think this is not a cheap copy of C. I'll talk about that in a moment. Bang. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value 
or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD. Directions Daily CSI 300 China A Share Bull and Bear ETFs. China A Shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Folks, we're back. So we're looking at uh, 8.42 a.m. in the morning. Uh, we're looking at the Dow futures up 237. The S&P futures is up 27. And the actual QQQ is up 213. So this is this is a pretty good session so far. Whatever was said in the jobs report, uh, is the market's taking it well. I had a question in the den about FANG, which is Di Diamondback Energy Inc., uh, trading at 85.80, up to 142 early uh, pre-market open. And I've got this Chapman Wave instant restart. So this is a G slash C. It's acting very well. It had, I, I did this, I had lost the notation here, but I remember writing it out uh, some time ago, and I should have taken it to heart because this is ex just a wonderful example of a Chapman wave overlapping wave. What happens is it goes to either a peak, B, and then it pulls back, or a C, and it pulls back. And then what happens is, Underneath the initial peak, this is the case is a weekly chart. It makes a peak C at, uh, on the week of the 5th of March at 88.75. Pulls back quite sharply to about 69. And then it starts a gray peak A, a gray peak B, and then it goes to gray peak C. And what happens is when that takes out the left side peak C, uh, the, the first one, that's the one that had a high of 70. 87.60, immediately it starts leg D. And that leg D should, right here, pick up the previous peak C. Now you've got an overlapping wave. The high before was 88.75. So once it goes to 88.76 in this leg up, that, co that constitutes a, a leg D in an overlapping wave, and the rule is that leg D should then pull back to the breakout level, and it could even go to a peak E and then pull back sharply. Well, this one went to the D, pulled back. It actually then immediately, a week later, goes boom, leg uh, E all the way to 102.53, the week of the 2nd of July. Then it pulls back very sharply to the 65.93 low of August the 20th, and now it's in a nice leg to the upside. So far, I have to still call it gray leg B because the MACD hasn't crossed positive, neither has the nine period over the 14th, but this is looking good because the monthly chart looks like that peak C high of in the 102s should be taken out at some point. It should go to a leg D at some point. That's a, a buy mode in the Chapman Wave methodology, invariably will take you to a D. That's the objective. Then you have to use other Chapman Wave techniques, but that's the objective. So let's see. Um, 
Uh, Basil, please review gene similar to PRQ or gene. I have noted gene. I wonder if I've still got my notation on gene. Uh, ah, everything. Yep. No, nope, it's all gone. So gene, uh, gene is uh, G E N E. Genetic technologies trading at three dollars and forty-four cents, up four cents. It's gone from a low of two point nine zero on the eighteenth of August, peak A. Let me show you this. Let me do this live so you can see. A lot of people now using Chapman Wave methodology, so I always have to be very clear what I'm doing. This is an A, and this would normally be a gray A until it has a sharper move up with a MACD crossing positive, it did. So that goes to a buy mode, and then there's a parallel high right here. Now, what I sometimes do at 347 and 347 on the 31st of August and 1st of September, is if I'm looking at the on-balance volume or any other little wiggles in the in the 9 EMA or something, I'll just to be safe, I'm going to call that a, a phantom peak C, because everything about this peak D said that that pullback should be quite sharp. So I put that in, and I always make it very clear that this is in the Chapman Wave methodology, but it is an it is an addendum. It is it is a side note that I can do that when I think that, especially when the stochastic fails at 80%, quickly goes down. What it did, it went from the 358 uh, or 59 area down to 319. That's a big percentage move. And now it's in leg A, gray leg A. And what I would quickly do is I'd put in this right here. This is a question from our, our bio, uh, biotech expert right there and i put that in i say okay make it very clear so far the macd is positive the nine period moving hasn't gone back to positive it's still negative um the stochastic is very it's flat at 31.49 on balance volume is good so you need to see everything in sync to be able to get a solid move up but this particular level here, what do I do in the Chapman Wave methodology? I, I color this. In. You don't have to color these things in. It's just that Trace Station is always has a fantastic toolkit for all these technicals. I, I use them. Not all of them. I use probably a, a, a one hundredth of all the th stuff that they have. Um, so yeah, we are Chapman Wave Inside Track Repellent Zone. If at any point in the next two three sessions you're looking at this, it doesn't have to close. It just has to pop to the 350 level. If it closes above 348, and then the very next session goes to 353, that's what you want to see. Because at that point, the stochastic will probably get to 35 or 38%. That's really what you want to see. That weekly chart, nothing to see here yet, but it is improving. And that says if there is a close on the weekly at any point in the next two weeks, a close that is above 365, That'll be your first sign of strength in the weekly chart. But it is biotech. You can see, if I looked at this chart, I'd say, oh, biotech. Why is that? Because intramonth, you've got these massive percentage gains. I mean, massive move from the twos into the sixes. And the same month, it plunges and closes at the low. You have a move back in, <laughs> you have a move back in, Jan uh, in July um, in the monthly that had a low of 218 and a high of $10.30. And four months later, it's trading at $2.77. Typical, typical biotech. This is one I'd be really careful of. You need to know the story. You need to be in the trade as it's about to accelerate. And once, what I would do is if this starts to accelerate to 365 in one quick swoop, I'd grab it and I'd put a tight stop in and let it just run. And if you get it that way, that's fantastic because it could keep going. Um, so just to be clear, anyone listening, this is a long-term hold for me, two-plus years, where I believe it will be much higher. Oh, okay, good. That, uh, good to know. He first bought it. Uh, okay, good. All right. Well, just keep in mind, folks, I'm talking about it as a biotech, and that's what happens. Okay, now I had a, a bunch of uh, questions. Um, uh, natural gas, natural gas, NG. Yeah, made a peak. Now, this is unusual because this, I, I couldn't count it any other way. I tried, but this, uh, I could, right there. All right. I could make that a phantom. The reason why I wanted, I kept looking at this chart and I'm saying, there's something wrong. This looks like it's acting as if it's a peak D. So this is what I do. Just not every time. You can't do it every time. But once in a while, I go through the charts and I say, what is there about this chart that says that that reversal has all the characteristics of what I'd expect at the fourth highest peak, 
Look at that pullback from 5.60s in natural gas down to the uh, 4.50s. Now it's trading at 4. Point, uh, sorry, 4.68 area, 4.73, and now it's trading at 4.85. And this has all the characteristics of a peak D, and now it, can, it has to restart a buy signal to buy mode. And the monthly chart made a peak cap. I'm watching natural gas. I think it made some kind of a top cap that might hold for a little bit longer. I'll be back in a moment for the final section. Basil Chapman, Tiger Christian's Hour, and uh, check out more people dating this there. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, right, folks. So just as we wrap up, let me just do this again very briefly. I'll just make it as clear as possible. If after 1.30 this afternoon, the Dow and the S&P and the QQQs and the IWM are running very strong. Dow is over plus 90, plus 120, uh, quite, uh, quite a bit more than that. That would be good action because that would replicate what we've seen in the on-balance volume at these moments where you've got a sharp pullback and a big reversal. My issue here is that the stochastic is still flat at 23.98%. It's not really confirming. So the close today into tomorrow is going to be really important. I don't want to miss out if we're going to go to at least test close to the previous highs and then maybe pull back. I don't know. Whatever it is, I want to be ready for it. We have got short positions. I'm going to stay in the short positions for now. They've been working very well, but I don't I, I want to overstay my welcome. 
keep keep this in mind that within the context of the pattern itself, yes, you could fail a little bit. Look at this one here. You've got a really nice turn up, and that was the high, the low of about the 18th of uh, August, and then it ran, and then it flattened out, and then it turned down. So what happens is going to be really important. And a, a, a statement came out to me. So let's see whether the Chapman wave versus the Fed is going to work out now. So the billion-dollar question: Will the Chapman wave knock out the Fed with the market continuing to f further downward slide, like you felt uh, earlier this week? Um, I, you know, I'm just following whatever I follow. I'm prepared to switch back. We have a core long-term position long from way back. The March lows of last year, but this is different. We've been correct in identifying the sell-off. The sell-off has been pretty sharp, but it's been a short-term sell-off in time for some of the indices. Look for the Dow. It's been going on since. Look at this. This is the uh, high that was made way back there at Aug the uh, August 16th. Look at the Qs. The QQQ only made its high on the 7th of September. You remember, there's a rotation in in highs that are made. So let's keep this in mind. How the Dow is acting later in the day is going to be really important for the close and for this particular pattern. The Dow hasn't yet fulfilled in the gap from Monday's gap down, but the others have been working to this. Have a wonderful day. I'll see you tomorrow for, for my, my show at the regular time, 10 a.m. Have a wonderful day. Stay tuned. Tommy O'Brien's coming up right now. Be great. Building wealth trading in the stock market.